sisterhood. Welcome back to another episode of Sisters. Today, it's a bit more of a somber show that we have for you, but nonetheless, it's very important that we do this show. Stay tuned. And we are back. Before we dive into today's show, let's give a shout out to our sponsors. We'd love to say thank you to Wonder Scrub Like Silk. They make amazing body scrubs, um, hair growth oil, and anything you need for your skin. We also want to give a shout out to Glam D Fashion for all of your loungewear needs. And of course, the Shimishana brand for all of your pet fashions. Hi, sisters. How are you today? Shamisa, today we're here to talk about a very serious topic, sexual violence. In June, a 14-year-old girl committed suicide after she was allegedly raped by a taxi driver. Less than two months after, a 20-year-old young man committed suicide after he too was allegedly raped. Today, we will sit and speak with a relative of Emmanuel Sealy, who took his life just recently after being raped. Uh, for obvious reasons, we will not disclose the name or identity of the relative, but we want to ensure that the public have a full understanding of the struggles that Mr. Emmanuel Slee endured before he ended his life. Uh, online, because uh, of technical difficulties, we would not see it project on the screen, so we have uh, that relative on this phone call with us and so i will before we get into um what was the heinous act committed against mr silly we would want to know who was 20 year old emmanuel silly go ahead my dear hello hello yes tell me a little a bit about your relative who was he you know, growing up and so forth? Well, growing up was a very loving, kind young man. Always honest. Always respectable. Never in a problem. Okay. Colleen? All right. So, can you tell us? Joy, sorry, sorry. Person. Go ahead. He was a joyful person. And... Yes. Very joyful person. And all right. Growing up, we always admire him. Mm -hmm. In any way, we can get him to go out. Even if the others don't want to go, mm -hmm. he said, man, I'll go. He will come, he will sit down, he will get up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he will be quiet. Sometimes he will sit and he sing. And he has a passion. He, he had a passion of wanting to become a military mm -hmm. in the army. And... You know, I have to know that all his happiness has ended one day just because he, he was, his life, he felt depressed that he's, he's not going to be happy anymore because of what has done to him. Mm-hmm. So can you tell us, was it challenging for Emmanuel growing up as a child? Yes. Um, what happened is mother at first when he was very young. So he remains with his close relative. Mm -hmm. And from that day, he remains with his close relative. He's very treated loving. And there's so much. He well, he had another course. sibling that died. Yes, he had a brother that passed away with leukemia cancer. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yes, two. And it's three of them, two boys, one girl. So he, Emmanuel, was the big one. Mm-hmm. So he always played a great role in their life, but he couldn't have done much as he could because at that time he was very young, he couldn't have worked, but he can assist them with his relatives. He used to try and assist them mm. in which way they could. Okay. But, so, mm-hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. But he already signed it up in the army and when he was to go in now to do the he went and trained and everything. Mm-hmm. And when they wanted him to start, like to go on the course, for the three months, he, um, he kind of started the trip by going to the upper bridge and to take his life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we will he get... Was, he was trout. Mm-hmm. We'll get to that part shortly. Point. Did you realize that Emmanuel, all was not well with Emmanuel? At what point did you realize? Okay. This incident, when I really realized that he is now well, that was in March. Mm-hmm. In March, mm-hmm. when... Um, he tried to take his life on the hour bridge. That's when I knew that something went wrong. But the incident happened before. Tell us about that. Yes. This incident occurred in January where he was drugged mm. and raped. Mm. But he was afraid to speak out mm-hmm. when it happened. So... He was like kind of taking it on, you know, until he ended up at the bridge. And that is when I received a call from the Lagrange police station saying that my nephew, um, that there's a young man here by the name of Emmanuel C. Mm. Um, he's saying that you're his mother. And you can come here. So I went. No ego to commit suicide on the Demoire Arbor Bridge. Where I went, I leave or and I went. And I saw him. His hand was uncuffed. And um, to the, the grill of the station, they lock up. So I was asking, like, why? What happened? Mm-hmm. And he wasn't responding. So I started to cry because I knew that he, I left him good. Mm. And um, after he started, they said they would release him in my custody. But when I asked him why, one of the police said, um, there's a young lady to go to take with him, squeeze her and tried to grab her to pull her across the bridge. So I said, man, something wrong because that is not him. Mm. Anyway, he he was saying to the police officer when they asked him, what happened? Um, If you you smoke or thing, he said, no. This guy threw um, pills in his water. When he asked for some water, he threw these pills, this molly pill in your water. Mm. The police was like, who is the person? If you can say who's the person that did this, who's the name, if you know the person, it's words, but the person's name is Selfie Boss. He said, where this person live? He said, over the bridge by Magdum's side. Mm. He said, where this thing happened? He said, by the studio, over the bridge by 97.1 studio. Mm. So we were trying to figure out where is the studio. So they say they don't know any studio over the bridge. So he keeps saying, yes, there's a studio. And the police them in the air was kind of 
um, but you don't take things from people or whatever. But he was on his own state. Mm. And they say, um, or oh, some of them was kind of making my oh, the guy wants space. He wants space because this is this Mali talk when people use those Mali drugs, is we like sit down and they want, they want space, they want space or whatever. Mm. So the guy said, Oh, he wanted space. The young man wants space. So one officer said to me, in the presence of the young lady, um, when he was handing him over to me, he said, and he asked if this young man tried to do this thing before. So I said, no. I said, man, this young man saying he was drugged. So he said, where he was drugged? And he said, over at Magdum, he said to me, that is not their district. Mm. It, um, this thing got to report by um, the police at the Brigger Outpost has to deal with this. But for now, they are in him in my custody so I can take him to get counseling. Mm. Oh. Which, mm -hmm. when they handed him over, we leave with him walking like the boat to take him to see counseling, but we did not get him because um, he kind of act up and he ended up in the hospital where he was admitted and was treated for the drugs in his system. So what Shamiz is asking, prior to the entire issue, the entire bridge ordeal, um, did he show any sign of depression before, say last year um, or anything? Was he showing signs of depression before this incident allegedly happened to him? Okay. Um, no, last year he wasn't showing any depression because he was good. Okay. Until this year. Okay, so I know the matter is now engaging the attention of the Ghana Police Force and the alleged accused uh, would have been taken into custody and subsequently released based on an intervention yes, yes. by his attorney. Uh, also, since the matter or since the story broke last week, we've heard a lot on social media, you know, the court of, of public opinion. And so we would want you to clear up some um, what you probably consider misconceptions. Uh, there's also, people are asking uh, why we were told that you went to um, the Mohammeds uh, to seek some sort of in intervention. Mm. We would want to know what is the truth behind that act. Did you go to the Mohammeds indeed? And if yes, what was your intention at that point? Because they're asking, oh, why did you know, this mm -hmm. relative go to the Mohammeds and not to the police as right. uh, as a first intervention. Mm -hmm. In which we were at the police in the, but remember now, the police didn't um, take this by matter serious mm. after they hand him over and he ended up in the hospital where he related everything to the social worker who was due, right? Mm -hmm. The social worker knew what take place because myself and my nephew related, which I related first and my nephew related after mm. in the presence of me. So the social worker was trying to find out who's this boy. And when the two, there was another social worker there. So when the, the two um, get like to figure out who's the person is like, oh, um, well, this boy no people. Mm. So they don't figure out if anything would have come out of the story. Mm -hmm. But um, for now, he's signing up a paper for me to let he be um, checked by, examined by the doctor for his head because this thing keeps telling him to kill himself. Mm -hmm. He even tried to do it in the hospital through the window. Mm. Okay. So and they had to tie him down mm -hmm. there. Okay. So after that, when the social worker related whatever and they told me when to bring him back, which I have the paper mm -hmm. for him to see a doctor with a psychiatrist about 
you know, once he, if this thing is messing with his brain or whatever. Anyway, um, when he get discharged, we came home, the social worker did ask me, call me the day for him to come. And I said, man, he left to go out with my mom. Hmm. And he said, okay, well, if you don't come back today, any other day, I can go to Georgetown public hospital and just ask for the psychiatrist what psychologist what or so mm. and from there they will treat him but I never get the chance to take him back there mm-hmm. and um as we then we try with him for him to come around but if he you know like decided to walk by himself we gotta be with him and so mm. or my mom or somebody gotta be with you were there and you wouldn't want to be, you just like taking on this thing. Now when you do catch yourself and you sit down and talk to him, man, you got to be lively. We need to support you, the tablets then that they give him for the drugs. You drink a couple and chew all the way in the bin, mm. you know, and his intention, oh, I need justice. I need justice. Mm. Saying, well, oh, I want to keep this by myself, forget my own justice and be satisfied. Right now, when he walk the streets, if some friends would bang him and hail him to give him good strength, some would be like, "Oh, but his body boy is an anti man," and there was pictures surfacing on Facebook of this guy who was standing over him and blacky face with emoji because it was shared with friends, so they were making laugh after him. He cannot take that anymore. Mm. Mm-hmm. He cannot take it. And this piece here with Mohammed, when my one of my son did surgery for a bone disease, mm. he had he had a bubble foot, which this bow foot, oh the bow was one of the bone actually ride it off. So he went and he get tested and so and he had a bone disease. So um he is home with antenna in his foot and his words was to me at the mommy um it's hard on me when i gotta be in the wheelchair sometimes i want to move to go buy something for myself or so i can't go i i'm i'm not uh, um not comfortable gotta call in people so um you don't want to write a letter for me to mr muhammad i see he's sharing a thing to people he's helping them out um do you want to write for an electric bike for me? I said, no problem. You sure? You say yes. I said, all right. And I write it. I took it in for him. And I said, asking him for the bike. So why is he called me? I went. And when I went, um, I raised the topic because they mentioned something about selfie boss and somebody was using on Facebook or something like that. So I said to him, I said, um, excuse me, sir. Um, the same guy that you guys talking about, the same selfie boss. Um, I have a nephew that he drugged and raped. Mm-hmm. Um, he said, what? I said, yes, there's a nephew who's drugged and raped by this individual. And you can't catch yourself onto this deep. He said, um, your nephew, you sure? I said, yes. He said, your nephew's not in for gay or so. I said, no. He said, okay. So right there, he placed his phone and put it on speaker in the presence of people who was there, a girl, a boy, a scammer man, mm. himself me and a fat guy worked with him. I knew everybody was there. And when I saw when he called himself when he called this guy, the guy was like, um, he said, Hey, selfie boss, this young man by the name of Emmanuel C. Where is he? He said, Emmanuel C remember the phone is on speaker. Mm-hmm. He said, I don't know um, nobody by that name. He said, Selfie Boss, this young man, Emmanuel Seed, 
We used to come by the 97 studio that you say you have. Where is he? He said, You don't know nobody by the name. He said, You get vexed. It's a selfie bar. There's one thing it takes to bring you down in life. This young man, Manuel City, that you were drugged and were drugged and raped by you. Where is he? He passed about 10 to 15 minutes. You didn't hear anything back from him. Mm. So, people there was like, it's true. Because you see, he passed. They believe her. I believe her. He said to him, so he said to him, he did believe. I he passed and cut off. Then, a couple minutes, so he passed, texted him, just as he cut off. Mm -hmm. And said, boss, that name did not ring a bell in my ears. Then he said, um, he called him back. Um, the guy called back Mohammed and said, Sir, um, something. He said, I don't have the time to talk to you right now. And from there, when he cut off, he said to me, Where is your nephew right now? I said, He's on the Linden Highway, who grew with my mom, spending some time. Mm. He said, Okay, get your nephew and bring him. I wanted to see him. And I said, no problem. He asked what I wanted out of this matter. I said, sir, all I wanted is justice for him. I don't need anything else but justice for him. Mm -hmm. He said, well, I cannot give you justice, but you will have to get justice from the police. Mm -hmm. But bring the young man. I get contact to bring him. He said, just bring him anytime. I get contact to bring him. And when I bring him the other time, which he gave me what he had to give me for my son in the donation of the, uh, the electric bike. And I left. When I get my nephew to come, that was on his birthday on the 12th of August, we saw Mr. Mohammed there. He had his cameraman. Yeah. Oh, move, move, mama. He had his cameraman, and he had, <laughs> and he had this news reporter there. There was a news reporter okay. there. I think he'd be on my um twenty-eight, but I knew him well. Mm. I see him. We all sit in the presence of my nephew. Mohammed was standing. He said to me, he said to my nephew, what happened? He said, say what happened. I said to him, yes, this is my nephew here. My nephew was sitting. Said, Please go. He said, um, yes, um, don't be afraid to talk. Don't be afraid to talk. My nephew said, okay. Mr. Mohammed said to my nephew, um, Azadeen, right? That's the, the son. He said to him, don't be afraid. Tell me what happened. Is something bad this did to you? He's watching him with tears in his eye. He said, that will be no frighten. He said, I'm here to help you. Did something bad did this to you? He said, yes. He said, what? He said, you know where this happened to you? He said, at McDonald's. He said, you know, because it's there you live in. He turned and he said, well, I think Selfie Boss got to compensate this young man. He said, we don't want to compensate, we need justice. He said, well, we cannot give you justice, but we're not taking anything out of uh, matters out of our own hands, but we saying he will have to do you that sometime, not, not them will be doing it. Mm. So, at that time, he said, all right, we will try to get him here. In the meantime, we will have to locate the police because when my nephew admitted it, and he wanted to confront it again in front of selfie bars. At that time, he did not call him back or anything. That is 
himself the watching did not call him but what he did he told me to come back within two weeks so he will have him there mm. that you can verify the story again so as my nephew say whatever he will be handed over to the police and my nephew never get to come back mm. to mr mohammed he, when we left, mommy take pictures of him, but she did not post it up. He gave him money for his birthday, and he said, have a place to buy something for yourself, I'm really late. The, the media said, go to the doctor, go to the social worker, run tests on this young man, that, you know, is evidence, because this is wrong. Mm. This is wrong, Right? And when we left, and we go away. Now, my nephew was to go back to Mr. Muhammad any day last week, between Friday, Monday, Tuesday, any day in that week. Mm. And my nephew was fine <laughs> in the house. Right? And I went back to Mr. Mohammed and I said to him, my nephew died. He fell <laughs> like he took his life. He said, what? He hold his head and he was walking up and down. He said, wow, what are we going to do from there? He said, some justice has to come out from this story because this young man took his life. He said, um, well, we will have to bury him. You just come up with what you have, and I'll help you out. But this is not right. We need justice. We never ask anybody for no money. We never ask for no compensation. All we ask for justice. The young man said, I need justice. Mm -hmm. That is what he said, and that's what we remain saying. Right? So there's nothing to hide and what they're bombarding on social media saying that we're taking money. We're not taking anything. Hmm. Okay? And wherever Mr. Mohammed donated was for my son that has the bone disease, where we did the surgery and everything hmm. come out sex so successful. So So that is it. Mm -hmm. Right. The full the po the police fail us. And the social worker was to report to this. He knew that we confronted this in front of him. Mm. It is not a case that we did not raise anything about it. Right. Right. So when we so hear you, it. we hear you. Pardon? We hear you. And we hear you say that you need justice. What does justice look okay. like to you or for you? When you say you okay, need justice, this, what does justice look yes, like? Yes, the justice, in my point of view, the justice is this man needs to be locked up, placed in jail, and be sentenced for his action. Something must come out of it. Hmm. Right, then there's too many young people taking the life because of rape and nothing comes out the story. Watch this guy. This young lady was raped and by the taxi driver. He released on bail. And when she took his life, you get locked up. What is that? This justice system is failing us in this country. Is failing us in this country. And it's not fair. I speak to Mr. Blanham and he related that they send out a warrant for him. Mm. Now he took a lawyer. He's not supposed to lose because I spoke to Mr. Singh. I was there when they bring him in. And just as I stepped out, they say, yes, they're keeping him in there until over the weekend, until we get in contact with a social worker. Mm. And the police who was stationed here, and just as we come out, he was released. That is not fair. And I spoke to him again. I said, this man is walking. What is the reason? He said he came in with his attorney, 
and we were told that he can release but let him report to the station mm. until the social work is there um, until we get the social work and um the matter is on point is not he is not free so don't be distracted of what he's saying mm. okay so yeah. you want to say something else so the woman who was there even to Ms. Mohammed, Mr. Mohammed said to her as there was the individual who was his friend. I don't know if I can say her name here. No. But just um, we prefer not to name individuals at this point. Yeah. Yes. But she was there and he said to her, Is you bring this man to me asking for help? Is your friend, mm -hmm. which I never appreciated him. Mm -hmm. Is you bring him asking for help, mm -hmm. and I tried to reach out. Mm -hmm. Our words was, I never knew him. He was a person like that, mm -hmm. or to do something like that. Mm -hmm. And she is what let whatever else out. Okay, so we want. I left. I don't know if there was any conversation about anything else, but. That was it. Okay. We want to say thank you so much for speaking with us, uh, just for telling, you know, the entirety of the story on behalf of Emmanuel Sili. I know that he was laid to rest on Saturday. We would like to express our deepest condolences to the entire family, and we do hope that justice is served for Emmanuel. Uh, for persons who may be feeling depressed, uh, we want you to seek help. Uh, we, there's a, a variety of counseling services yeah. available throughout the length and breadth of Guyana. Uh, suicide, you know, should never be an option. Uh, we value each and every one, and we should show love and care and consideration, you know, every day, you know, as we go about, you know, our daily duties and as we go about meeting and greeting people. And so I will hand over this point to Shemisa for her to wrap up today's show. And uh, I want to say thank you so much again for coming on and speaking up and speaking out. Yeah. Yes, there. Thank you, too. Yes, in, in, indeed. So Ona, that was um, beautifully said. And we just want our viewers to know that the sister show, we do not condone violence by any means. Um, so we want to put that out there and offer our sympathy to the victim's family. And we want to also celebrate Emmanuel's life and, and remember him for the amazing young man that he was. With that, we thank you for, for watching and tuning in and do be sure to click like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye.